your network do that? What's up guys, Jeff here with MTS and I have a little bit of a problem. Now the first network in a box that I built a number of years ago, if you remember, it was in an old AKG microphone case and well, it had a number of issues. For starters, it was using a consumer grade Linksys router, so I couldn't do multiple SSIDs, I couldn't do VLANs or anything like that. The second being that I only had two exposed PoE ports for me to use to connect devices. Now, this wasn't too big of an issue as I had a free port inside of the box so I could just open it up, but then that box couldn't be closed. And the other issue that I had was, well, none of the cables were really locking, or at least locking to, you know, somebody tripping over it and it not pulling out. It was just using standard IEC and standard RJ45. So I needed to build something better, and well, I did. Now, Network in a Box 2.0 varies from the original in three main ways. The first one being, well, it's built in an actual rugged enclosure. The second one being we have a managed router. We're using a Unify USG. We also have a ubiquity access point. So that way I can do things like spin up a second SSID for client devices. So if I'm doing a conference and the owner or operator of the conference, whoever's hosting it, wants to be able to have the guests in the venue connect to a network, this can do it. I can have a network for presenter devices, for all my control stuff. It just makes things a lot easier. Now, the third big difference is that all of the ports are locking. We have locking RJ45 Ethercon ports, True One for power, and XLR for DMX. With the overview out of the way, let's take a look at what's inside this thing. Opening this guy up, we have a number of cables and things all ready to go. First one we have is just an RJ45 cable. The second thing we have is an Ethernet, well, EtherCon to USB adapter for my laptop. Now this was originally just a USB network adapter except for the locking portion of the port broke. So I just had to tape this cable into it and well, this basically just gets used for my laptop. Next thing we have is a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter. We have DMX from 3-pin XLR to RJ45. A nice long RJ45 cable. Now this one is especially flexible, which is why I really like it. It coils nice and easy. The next thing we have is a six foot Ethercon cable. So this will generally be used going from device to device. If I'm going from my soundboard to the box, something like that. And we have our True One cable for locking power. You can remove this foam and here are all of the guts. First off, we have our two XLR cables up top. They're both terminated to male XLR, but one of them is for input, one of them is for output into an ArtNet node. And the second thing we have is all of our connectors here at the side. Now these are all of our Ethercon ports. I have a black one as my WAN connection, and then I have silver ones for all of the LAN connections. Then we have our two PoE switches. Now these are little 50 watt AUMOX PoE switches. 50 times two is 100, so we have 100 watts of PoE budget to play with amongst all of our ports here. Now the next thing we have is our little USG down here. And the USG is getting power over one of these TP-Link PoE extractors. That way I don't have to make room for the power brick for the USG. And then we have a Flex HD access point zip tied and shock mounted to the side. I went with zip ties on this mount just because I didn't want it to be any rigid mount. I didn't want this to, you know, take the shock of the case. And all of these components are mounted in with Velcro aside from the connectors which are screwed in. And we have all of our power supplies at the back. Also tucked back here is a fan. We have a 40 millimeter cooling fan which taps into the PoE power from this PoE extractor. And here's how everything's wired up. Now, Network in a Box 2.0 has a little brother, and it looks like this. Now, this guy didn't get any budget because the Ethercon ports on that thing alone cost me over $100. But this is great as a little remote stage box or booth box, depending on where the internet connection or where the most connections that I need are. So if I need to have Network in a Box 2.0 at the stage, this can come back to the booth with me or vice versa. Now, powering this box is an in-wall HD access point. So I have an access point and a switch that's managed with PoE pass-through. So I have my uplink connection labeled as black, then I have my outputs or my downlink ports as white, and red is the PoE output port of the in-wall HD. Opening things up, there's usually just a spare cable in here in case I forget or am in a pinch, but it's really just a ruggedized version of the 
in wall access point. I have some foam propping up the access point to uh, reduce stress on the connector on the underside of it. And just a few short little jumper cables that take the connections from the switch access points to the various ports on the box. This thing is super simple, but it works great. Now with this being a Unify system, I'm running the controller just directly off of my laptop. I'd love to do something like a little Raspberry Pi or a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus in the future, but for right now, I couldn't really justify spending the extra money and the extra space, heat output, power delivery, all that on a controller. This stuff, the settings don't change all that often, and when they do, I pretty much always have my laptop with me on any event that I'm doing. So for me, just running the controller on my laptop works fine. Overall, I've been thrilled with my networks in boxes. They've worked great and accomplished pretty much everything I set out to have them do. They're fully self-contained, fast to set up, easy to reconfigure, and none of my connections come loose. So for me, this guy has been a massive time saver. I've already used it on a number of events because, well, just about every event that I do needs a network for something, whether it's lighting, audio, video, camera control, things like that, or live streaming, whatever. It's all network-based. So for me, these guys have been an invaluable addition to my tool set. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you really liked it and want to see more of me in your subscription feed, well, then you can go ahead and get subscribed. I'll have links to some of the parts that I used in these projects down in the description below. But while you're down there, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know, could you use something like this? Or how would you adapt this to fit your needs? I know for me, one of the changes that I'd like to make is I want to at least have the uplink port of the baby network in a box be Ethercon, so that way I can use an Ethercon to Ethercon cable and not have to worry about this connection coming loose. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.